Hi everybody and welcome to this month's tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hiddeman. I am the senior sales engineer with the steel segment here at Trimble for Techless Structure Software. And in this video we're going to be talking about some basics of modifying your profile catalog and the available shapes that you have. Now, I'm not going to be going into a super deep dive onto the different methods. I just want to show a couple of simple examples to help you out. And the first one is going to be editing, creating, copying fixed profiles, meaning it's always the same size and shape like your standard AISC, you know, wide flanges and tubes and things like that. Um, so if you come in here under your file menu and you go to catalogs, you can access the profile catalog. And in here you can see it's broken down into all of our different profile types, I profiles, L profiles, T profiles, so on and so forth. Um, now in here, if I go through to say my W16s, um, we can see that these profiles first off have a blue icon associated with them. That blue icon indicates that this is a fixed shape. And when I click on one, I can see the properties of this shape, including some analysis properties that can be used um, for different reasons, um, including engineering or just calculations of things like weight. Uh, and then also some user attributes that can be used in things like custom components and called into templates. So there's a lot of properties going on with this shape. But there's a common thing that at least I used to run into, and that is uh, I would be doing renovations to an existing structure where it was built using shapes that do not exist anymore. And I need to create those in my Tecla model so that I can frame my new steel up against it. Um, and some of that steel might be, for example, something out of the uh, 1946 steel <laughs> manual that I found here. And you may find yourself dealing with a CB 162 by 71 pounds per feet. So if I want to create this shape in Tecla, there's a couple of ways I can go about it. Um, I can come over here and I can right click somewhere in this profile catalog and I can choose add profile, which is going to basically start from scratch. My personal preferred method would be to copy a profile that is similar to what I'm trying to create. So in this example, um, this is going to be a 16 inch by eight and a half inch wide beam. So I'm, you know, <laughs> in my 16 inch sections. So I may find something relatively similar like this 16 by 57, and then I can right click and I can copy this profile. You can see right away it makes a new shape called W16 by 57 copy. So from here, I may want to change my name. So I'm going to call this a CB162 by 71. So I'm going to go ahead and select it up here in the profile name. I'm going to type in a CB162 by 71. And again, you could call this out to um, you know a number of different ways, but I'll go ahead and hit enter. Now we can see how it's been now brought down under this subgroup called other eye profiles. Now there are ways that you can manipulate the, the filters that create these groups. That's a topic for a whole nother video. We're not gonna worry about that today. But I wanna show you about editing all of the shapes over here, so, or the dimensions. So a CB162 uh, by 71 is actually 16 and 1 8 inch deep. It is uh, eight and a half inches wide. The flange thickness is 11 sixteenths. The web thickness is a half inch. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the rounding radius is off the top of my head. Now besides the dimensional properties that we see here, I can also adjust some of these analysis properties. And you know, a lot of this stuff you're probably not gonna be able to find in the old uh, catalogs that you're referencing. Um, so I would probably clear out most of these fields, but where I do want to make some adjustments are going to be to the cross-sectional area because Tecla uses this in some of our weight calculations. I've already gone through and done the math to figure out what this is, so I'm going to go ahead and enter uh, what I've got here. Um, so that's going to help me with weight calculations in some cases. And also you're going to want to adjust your weight per unit length, which we know is 71 pounds based on the name and based on the catalog. Um, so that's a different type of weight calculation. So I just like to make sure I have those two depending on what I need. Now the user attributes, again, you may not need all of these, but one that may come in handy if I reference back to this 
a CB162 has a standard gauge of five and a half inches. So I may want to come up here and set up my workable gauge just in case I'm using this shape in a custom component or something like that. And once again, I could come through and edit a lot of this information. But once you have that done, you can go ahead and click update and then click OK, and you're going to get the option to save these changes to the model folder. I'm going to go ahead and say yes, I want to save those changes to the model folder. From that point on, I'm able to use that shape in my shape catalog, or in my profile catalog. So if I come in here, and I go to model a new steel beam, under my other eye profiles, kind of you know dumped down here into the list, is that new CB162 by 71. And if I go ahead and hit OK, that's now filled in. I can pick two points, and I get that particular shape. And if I wanted to, you know, just double check its dimensions real quick, let me go ahead and turn on uh, some of my snapping tools. We got 16 and an eighth deep by uh, eight and a half inches wide, so I did get the shape that I was looking for. Now, being that this is a historical shape and this is probably an existing building, um, I would go ahead and change the user-defined attribute for this to make this an existing member. That way it doesn't end up in any of my default reports or you know drawings or things like that. But that's going to be your standard fixed shape where you can copy something or create from new. You fill out the information, you save it to your, your model folder. Um, on a little side note here, when you save a profile to your model folder, um, that's going to create an updated profdb.bin file. That's the actual profile catalog that you're referencing. So you can take that profdb.bin file and you can put it in a firm folder and that way that shape will always be available to you forever and ever. Um, so worth thinking about depending on what types of jobs you're doing and what you're using these shapes for. Well, that works great for a fixed shape, but what about a parametric shape? Um, so an example of some parametric shapes might be, let's go back to our catalog here real quick under the profile catalog and look at something like the round circular sections. And, and if I, I'm going to go ahead and reopen um, the eye profiles real quick just to show you the color difference in the icons. Remember, blue indicates that this is a fixed defined shape. So over here, these are fixed dimensions. Orange indicates that these are parametric shapes. They can be many different sizes. So they're essentially whatever you type is what you get. So if I wanted to make an AB for an anchor bolt and I want this to be, you know, three inches in diameter, when I go to model in this part, let's go back over here and I'm going to load a sample rod profile. Um, if I wanted to make that AB you know, three, as I was mentioning, I've got a now three inch diameter anchor rod. Or if I wanted to change this to be uh, one half inch, now I have a half inch anchor rod. So a parametric shape allows me to type in whatever I want. So what if I want to get a new parametric shape? Um, you'll find that if I go into my profile catalog and I try to do what I just did, like right clicking and copy, it doesn't actually copy a parametric shape. Nothing happens, okay? And the reason for that is because parametric shapes are actually handled somewhere else. They're handled in a file called profitab.inp. Um, uh, different people may pronounce that differently. The easiest way to get to that is to use your directory browser. It's found in your Applications and Components catalog. So if I come over here and I run the directory browser and go to the Advanced tab, I can go to the Catalogs button, which opens up all of the catalog data that Tecla is referencing right now. So this is going to include my shape catalog, my material catalog, my bolt catalog, so on and so forth. Okay. So the file that I'm specifically interested in is this Profit Again, I could pronounce it Profit Tab, you call it Profit AB. Um, I'm going to open this up in Notepad, or in this case, Notepad++. And this is where you'll find the parametric shapes are being defined. Things like plate and flat bar, um, things like your rods and cable, okay? Now, getting into creating entirely new custom parametric shapes is a very large topic. You can go read all about it on the, um, the Tecla user assistance. That's not the point of this video. In this video, I'm just trying to show you the basics of how you can create some custom shapes. So for example, let's say that 
uh, you wanted a new plate type or maybe a new flat bar type. Some people like to have different prefixes for their flat bars. In this case, I've got FL, FLT, FB, right? So maybe you wanted to have F bar as a profile type, okay? So for, for that, what you can do is in the profitab.imp file, you can copy one of those existing lines, paste it in here, and then go ahead and adjust the prefix to be whatever it is you like. In this case, I'm just creating an F bar. Again, you could call this whatever. Um, maybe in the example of the rod that I was talking about, here I have AB for an uh, anchor bolt. Maybe uh, my company or maybe my customer likes to use AR for anchor rod. So in this case, I'll go ahead and I'll copy the AB, paste that in here, change this to AR, and again, you know, do whatever I needed to do to, you know, clean up the, the data that I've got. But once I've edited this file, let me go ahead and save this. I'm going to go ahead and restart Tecla. I'm not going to bore you waiting for Tecla to restart. I'm going to skip ahead to that, but we'll skip ahead to reopening Tecla and take a look at those shapes in the shape catalog. All right, so I, you know, through the magic of editing, I've got the model reopened now. So let's go ahead and, you know, walk through those same steps from a moment ago. So there's my half inch diameter AB profile. So let's come in here and load rod again. And we'll go ahead and open this up. And you'll see that now I've got an AR in addition to the AB and the RB and whatever else that I wanted to create. So this now works like every other parametric shape. If I wanted to make an AR four inch diameter, I can make an AR four inch diameter. Um, if I wanted to make a flat bar, let's come in here and let's make a plate. And we'll, uh, so right now I got plate, let's open up flats and bars. So I got bar, FB, and there is my F bar where I can go ahead and again, parametric shape. If I wanna make this 10 inches wide by, uh, you know, half inch thick, pick two points. I've got my 10 inch wide, half inch thick F bar material type. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, you know, again, just a, a simple introduction to copying existing fixed profiles and making new ones, creating some basic parametric shapes from existing styles. You know, this is going to knock out 99% of the custom stuff you ever need to make. Um, I'm going to provide a link down below for an older video that I made about importing CAD cross sections to create really crazy custom shapes. Um, obviously, these are pretty simple. So if you have a CAD cross section of something that you want to turn into a profile, I've got an existing video for that. It'll be linked in the description. Go ahead and check that out as well. Um, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you took something helpful away from this month's uh, tips and tricks, and we'll see you next time.